Hi guys, let's try this again. So today I am going live with psychotherapist Jared Powell from the US. Jared and I exchanged sessions a few weeks ago and um, today we're actually, here he is, re-embodying emotional experience. Yay. Now it's going to work. View. Um, well, we exchanged the sessions, so he facilitated me and I facilitated him and we recorded everything. Hello there. Yay. Hey, it's great to be with you, Frederica. Hi, good to see you. Can you see I'm sort of a, me? Okay. I can see you perfectly. I'm a, I'm a little new to the, to the Instagram live stream. Great. It was, it was great to also work with you and exchange those sessions yeah it was awesome like I just went through basically everything again because I was doing the subtitles I was like oh yeah this happened and that happened <laughs> how have you been doing like it's been like six weeks almost I think since we did it yeah really it's been some time uh, uh, when it comes to some of the stuff that we worked on we can we can talk a little more about that next week yeah um, I think we were going to talk about your, your session today this week um, yeah 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 you know it's the sort of thing that has an impact it's, it's, it stays with you yeah 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 so i was um just starting to explain or try to explain um like the session that we were doing or that where you facilitated me we were focusing on or you were focusing on building a resource state and i'm wondering how you would explain resource state like what i was saying is that to me it felt like well finding a place or a state in my body that feels stable and comfortable that i could fall back on when other things come up but maybe you have a more like better way of that's explaining way of, <laughs> yeah that's a great way of putting it honestly frederica it's that's when it, when it comes to helping somebody experience sort of the depths of themselves they're going to experience a lot of intensity and so a lot of the work i do has to do with helping people feel re-regulated and to feel stable again and mm. to be able to access stability whenever they need it mm -hmm. because as you go a layer down and then another layer down and then another layer down uh there's 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 a release there's a release of energy and mm -hmm. the nervous system needs to be ready to make room for all of that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so what we were focusing on a lot was finding places of stability in the body and just focusing on them, uh, working with them. Essentially what that does is it creates a pathway for people to go back to when they're processing. Cause a lot of the work I do is trauma work. Yeah. And, uh, deals with attachment wounds and, and shame and things that uh, people have been overwhelmed by. Mm. So maybe just to go back, like trauma work and all that inner work, uh, I would say like includes a lot of like uncomfortable or maybe even overwhelming emotions coming up. And then this finding this resource first helps us not to drown would you say that's right yeah not to drown and that's the first part the the second part is to transform the the, the intense experience so that it is actually pleasurable i mean there's a part of all of us that longs for wholeness there's there's mm -hmm. a part of all of us that longs for the ability to feel everything and for a person to experience a sense of wholeness with pain and with fear and shame uh they first need to be able to experience their strength and their stability so that they can mm. uh accept the pain in its fullness and and what happens in the body when they've resourced themselves well like we were practicing is that um when they're able to look at some of the things that that have continued to to waylay them or hurt them uh, that they start to experience release, uh, sometimes tingles and shivers and heat 
resolving in openness and a feeling of presence and even pleasure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember for me, so for everyone who's watching this, I just finished with the t subtitles. So like about two minutes after this live stream, I'm going to put all of that on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> for me, like, I think what you were saying is like, find this place in your body that feels good, you know, that feels kind of stable, calm. I think it was like somewhat between my hips. And I just felt like there was this area that felt grounded. And then we like expanded into that and then from there like I wonder if you can share what happens in the nervous system because I don't have that kind of like knowledge or terminology but you were also saying like use your hands and do something like that and see if that um, expands that feeling more or if it somehow distracts you or inhibits you or something like what do these kind of things do the, the 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 bilateral stimulation a lot of times non-parallel movements whether it's you know tapping or whether it's uh shifting your body or rocking um it tends to both laterally integrate so that the parts of the nervous system on both sides of the body are working with each other and it also tends to activate your um arousal system a little bit mm -hmm. the sympathetic nervous system uh the sort of that that driving system when we talk when we talk about flight or flight it, fight or flight mm -hmm. when we talk about the threat response system um, and a certain amount of that energizing uh, sometimes even disturbing feeling needs to be activated uh, for there to be a deep interconnection it's almost like there's a whole bunch of parts of us that know exactly where they need to connect like little plugs trying to plug into the plug sockets and mm. there needs to be an energetic push so they can finally reach those plug sockets and so yeah. the, the, the bilateral stimulation <clears throat> rocking moving uh you can do it with eye movements but mm -hmm. that gets really messy because of the orienting response like mm -hmm. your brain does stuff when you move your eyes you only want to do that when you mm -hmm. I, I want people to do that when i want a whole bunch of stuff coming together but um mm. but the the the, the tapping the purpose was to activate that energetic push inside while at the same time uh, activating both sides of your nervous system so all these wonderful resources that you already had inside of you could mm. could start collaborating with all these systems mapped to other systems in your body uh, these parts of you could start collaborating the way that they're able to when they're given sufficient energy and and uh, invitation mm. Yeah, okay. I think I heard somewhere as an explanation for these kind of, um, how do you call it, non-parallel movements, that it's kind of activates the natural processing or trauma processing or emotional processing in the brain. Is that correct? Or is it, I don't know where I yeah. picked that up. Well, yeah, it does because, it, it, well said, uh, our our bodies are designed to be uh, emotion processing machines. We're designed for wholeness. Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent, uh, just activating more parts of the nervous system at the same time, you get all these diverse resources inside of you. And so um, part of the reason why I had you do this super focused mindfulness thing and why I have a lot of people do that uh, is, is because when you turn attention to the parts of you that feel stable, whatever you're turning attention to, it tends to create this, to kick off this whole relationship system. Whatever you're focusing on as a human, you're going to start relating to, partly mm. for survival, because, you know, we, mm -hmm. we, uh, we need to be able to, to, to adapt to whatever we see and whatever we experience in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I, I suspect that there's something a lot deeper um, you know, I mean, I do nervous systems. That's kind of my focus. That's my study. That's what I, what I do for a profession, but, mm -hmm. um, our spiritual forces, uh, universal forces. There's a lot I don't know about that when I see something happening that, that seems to speak to those, those deeper and bigger things that I don't understand. Uh, I act more as a, a witness in awe and wonder 
Hmm. I don't try to explain it. I try mm-hmm. to I try to feel it and be with it. Yeah, yeah. I remember also that you were often like kind of mirroring back to me like what I was experiencing. Um I remember for me, actually, what happened also with those movements was I got a little like sidetracked and I don't know if it was the movement or if it was the being sidetracked that somehow this anxiety started coming in that then we were working with or trying to listen to. Um, And I remember like maybe what I can say now that we did this whole thing with the finding this resource state, like I use it all the time. Like I use it with my clients as well, but also like sometimes when I meditate or when I feel like maybe there's a, a part of me, like inside of me physically where I don't feel good. Like I try to like go to where does it actually feel good, you know, and then kind of shift the intention the attention back and forth. And I think you were saying it's called pendulation process. Can you say something about that as well? Because that was really interesting. Sure. Um, First of all, I love when those anxious feelings come up because that's the material that's going to resolve into release connection and pleasure or presence or some some sort of good thing. When it comes to Mm -hmm. pendulation, um, that was a term coined by Peter Levine he was one of he is one of the foremost uh, r- researchers and practitioners in body mind medicine. Uh, this is this is a fellow who he 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 explained that nervous systems when they readjust themselves when they reconnect and heal they do it in expanding and contracting patterns. And a lot of mm-hmm. times when you're when you're working with somebody to try to help them. Uh, sort of harness these these deep internal processes. Um, you you want to both recognize when the body's pendulating. It's like a pendulum touching into the experience and touching out of it, and touching into the experience and touching out of it, so that you don't judge them or or say, oh, you're not focusing enough. If their mind pops off to somewhere else, mm-hmm. you recognize that's just the nervous system seeking to touch in and touch out. And also, uh, we 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 can engage in sort of a a, a manual or a or a you know, where, where we help people pendulate by helping them touch into a feeling and then purposely touch into a different feeling and then touch back to that feeling. And mm-hmm. what happens is there's this wonderful convergence in most cases when, when you yeah. start to do that. Yeah, that's, that, that's really interesting because I think we often do that to ourselves or I see clients too, that, you know, we get into something and then we're like, ah, oh, damn, like, I'm so bad. Like, I can't stay there. I'm always coming out. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, it's okay. Like, take your time, you know, <laughs> you know, and um, that's really cool to know that that's also like not something that we're like imagining is happening, but it's actually something that's happening in the nervous system. Um, <clears throat> what was really interesting for me throughout, like, like the middle part of the session was like, it felt like you were feeling like, man, there's something, maybe I'm wrong, right? This is just my interpretation. There's something that wants to come out, but it's not coming out. And I kept feeling like, but I think it's okay. Like, what are we getting at? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, um, what, what, what'll often happen is, I mean, it's, it's not a secret that humans feel things with other humans. Um, we're designed to mirror one another. We, it's like it's part of whatever, whatever created us, whatever put us, you know, put us here, separated us into different differentiated beings. Uh, we, we have these mirror neurons, these mirror response systems inside of us. And in, in childhood, it's really wonderful that we have these things because then we can connect so deeply with our caregiver. We can co-regulate mm-hmm. with them. As long as the machinery isn't broken, we can, we can, uh, we can experience um, deep wholeness and connection that, that helps us to learn how to regulate ourselves as we grow and differentiate further. And so in therapy and, and, in, and in, when working with clients and sometimes just working with a close friend that you love and you want to be there for, what will often happen is you'll just be calm and centered within yourself you'll be listening to your friend you'll be attuning to your own internal experience just kind of noticing what you feel noticing what's happening and then as you're looking at them and noticing what you feel uh, suddenly something foreign comes in and that's either going to be 
something from your own, uh, just, just what's processing within you, what's coming together and converging and releasing within you, or uh, it's, it's uh, something that's mirror, it's you're mirroring their output. And it's mm -hmm. honestly hard for me to tell uh, in, in all circumstances, whether it's what's happening inside of me or if it's the resonant feeling of what I'm getting from that other person. Mm -hmm. and so um, when it comes up, it's, it's, it's happened enough that, that I'm starting to realize it's probably what's happening in them. And mm -hmm. it'll start processing in my body rapidly. And my body's going to process it differently than them because my training is different. So a lot of times I might get this strange feeling of tension in my chest and then it starts distributing into my arms and tingling down through my legs. I don't know what's happening in their body. Is it staying in them? Is it getting stuck? If it continues to emit a feeling inside or and, and create a feeling inside of me, then chances are it's just, it's, it's continuing to uh, exist within them. And so, so a lot of mm -hmm. times I'll reflect. Okay, go ahead. No, 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 finish. <laughs> So, so a lot of times what I'll, what I'll want to do is, is feel it uh, shivering through me, tingling through me, uh, burning through me if it's heat. Sometimes it gets kind of hot and kind of intense. Um, and, and, and just basically be, be their witness on a level where as it processes in me, my response to them will have the metabolized sort of product of having processed what they felt. And I, and I, so I do you to do think... That. Do you think that you're actually processing for them or you're processing with them? Or it's like both or it kicks off something in you and you process your own thing probably simultaneously as well? Super glad you asked. Yes, yes, and yes. You're, you're mm -hmm. so astute in your observations. Um, you, uh, when, when, when this happens, I will be processing... Um, what, what's happening and feeding back to them. But a lot of the feedback happens before I speak. Mm -hmm. The back and forth interaction between humans is very much like the interactions in our nervous systems. It's just a lot more complex because there's mm -hmm. so many mediating factors. And so, so yes, I'm processing with them. The conversation is happening before I speak. As I metabolize it in my body, the metabolized changed sort of version of what they just said is coming back to them. And mm -hmm. if I say it and, and, it, and it resonates with them through the language system, then, then it brings it to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people can, will, will have told me, it's like, it's kind of an invasive. I, I want my thoughts to be mine, in which case I pull back. I don't say it. I feel it. Mm -hmm. I keep it wordless. Yeah. I do not say it. But mm -hmm. um, also my own stuff absolutely does come into play. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible for it not to. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it, a lot of times we talk about secondary trauma and vicarious trauma when we're working with people uh, because we, we co-innervate as well as co-regulate. We don't always calm each other down. We also uh, trigger each other. Mm. And it's a reality that uh, I face a lot working with um, people who've gone through a lot of pain and are still yeah. going through a lot of pain in some cases. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you're saying this because... Uh, like I often got this this question. Um, so are are you able to like stay detached from what's happening, like with your clients? Like, don't you carry it home, you know? And I'm like, you know what? But uh, you know, most of the time it doesn't really affect me very much because often you know we swing the pendulum back up, you know. But sometimes. Of course, you know, of course if it affects me when I hear of some of the horrific things people go through. And I think it's good. Like it means it's, I'm functioning. Like it means, you know, I'm empathetic and there's compassion there. Like I think there would be something wrong with me if it didn't affect me actually, you know. And yeah, I'm so glad you're, you're saying this. I think the only thing like is that we as, as, therapists as healers as coaches stay aware of that happening you know and being able to hold space for you know what's mine and what's theirs and maybe to clarify if need be you know yeah. mm. well we need it we do need you remember yeah do you remember um so in that session like going back to like the session that you 
facilitated. Um, there was a, a moment where you eventually said, you know what? I feel like I don't need to tell you anything. I feel like you already know what to do. Something along those lines. And that for me was like, oh my God, finally, yes, like someone said this, thank God, <laughs> you know? Um, can you share, like for me, this came as a total surprise because I was also like, I was feeling, okay, he's obviously feeling there's something still there to discover. And because I trusted your like, mirroring response i'm like well i think there still is something but on the other hand i was getting this message but actually i'm okay like leave me alone you know like so i was getting both and then when you said that i was like oh yes you know can you share like how this felt for you or how you got to if you remembered um to this point where you where you said that yeah it it definitely started as a feeling in inside of me and that's usually how it starts for me there's this there's this conversation that goes on on the inside and it doesn't have words it's it's way too deep and quick and it and it's felt in the body and um i don't recall exactly where i was feeling it in my body but but the, as the as the feeling converged i had a sensation that seemed to fit that. And I did my best to put into words what I was feeling from this internal conversation. And then mm -hmm. it was very much this, this feeling of she, she doesn't need me to go any further. And, and mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's great that there, there was that feeling of validation. And yes, you finally understand me. Somebody is understanding me right at this moment yeah. because <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so complex, the interactions with people. It's, it's often hard to tell how to exactly explicate what feelings come up. And I know like in couples work, like when mm -hmm. I work with couples, there's a lot of different sort of packets of energy and information flowing about, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, and also with group therapy, for example, there's, there's a lot uh, going on and, and the, the sort of just running through my body as I work with people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, be, being able to to sort of let this feeling come to words. I mean, that's sort of uh, us exercising or, or sort of just enjoying one of the most advanced things about being a human. It's letting all these, these, these things registering in our bodies come up to conscious thought and then working with the, with the conscious thought and feeding that back to the body. And so... I mean, I still remember um, uh, having a couple session where I never said this out loud, but it, it was it was the strangest feeling, and and words came into my mind where it was like, and it was these were both religious people, but with different religions, you know, and I, and it said, "Let the God speak," and I remember thinking, "Let the God speak? What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know." Except, I it it occurred to me that something happening inside of them, something deep within inside of them needed to, uh, to, to, to have room in this mm -hmm. session. And I remember just very much holding back. And that was one of the most verbal internal experiences I had with it. But um, mm -hmm. it's uh, off, often I'll get, I'll get these messages of when to act and when to forbear and when to sometimes jump in. And, and it's great when I can help somebody to stop a panic attack from happening in the middle so they can keep processing without being overwhelmed. It's great mm -hmm. when I can see somebody who's ready to go to the next level on their own feel validated and appreciated for their you know with for their own talents and capabilities mm -hmm. and that kind of thing yeah it is so interesting for me um because you say like you do nervous systems which i was like that's actually a cool job description I'm like what do you do for a living i do nervous systems <laughs> um no, to have someone like with your background um, explain, you know, that it's not just some esoteric woo woo thing, but it's actually like this is what's happening. And I feel like it's very useful also, maybe for any kind of interaction to know 
you know, even with friends, like when we start feeling something, like we can check in with them and see like, hey, I'm feeling this, is this you, you know, or, you know, what's happening at the moment. And yeah, I remember when, when you said that, um, maybe to kind of uh, wrap up a little bit, uh, for me, it was such a relief because I had done so much shadow work and and like therapy if you want and coaching and healing sessions and they were all great like they they served me a lot however it was always this kind of guidance you know where it's like now we go there and we go there and of course you know i guide myself and they accompany me and it's this kind of process where both of us are involved but it it's always going somewhere there's some direction there and i had felt before that session that's why i was so happy when you said oh we're gonna do this resource state thing i was like oh this that's good you know no processing <laughs> like just resource state that sounds great um and i was i had this i was in this period of my life where i was just so tired of shadow work i was just so tired of oh i have to dive again i have to resolve this other thing and this next thing and i'm working with someone and all i want is maybe like some mirroring and then they're like oh this is probably this and there's that part of you that wants this and blah blah, blah. and i'm like oh like no like leave me alone like i just i know what to do like leave me alone let me live my life you know and then when you said that when you said like you know what to do i was like oh my god he's seeing me like he's understanding me it was like oh this is so good <laughs> you know um and i remember you said oh wow i don't know what's happening but i feel like something is definitely happening now you know when when i said that and that was very uh very beautiful and there was so much like gratitude within me for that in that moment um yeah and i'm still very grateful for that experience it's really nice um yeah you know I, I, one thing i i definitely comes to mind you know i mean i realize we're, we're wrapping up here but one of the things that definitely comes to mind is that whether it's uh work in sort of this uh, the, the sort of the esoteric type of work or whether it's sort of the um western model neurobiological therapy stuff good work with people involves what i guess from a western point of view could be termed intersubjective empathic processing mm. good, good therapy always involves that you know and i kind of only imagine good coaching good shadow work coaching good intuitive healing work very much involves that yeah and our failure is you know as a profession and on my side on a, sort of the western side that i'll claim it partially is that we're failing to put into western terms some of the the rich deep uh wonderful things we're getting from other traditions and mm -hmm. too many practitioners will say oh well i'm going to depart from the western model and go towards uh this 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 other uh sort of spiritual tradition or eastern model with without making a bridge between them mm. and the reality is that there is no separation we're looking at it from different from different angles and how wonderful when we look deeply enough mm -hmm. to, to see all the way to the other side yeah absolutely i agree yeah it, it always comes down to the person like i know so many people like um they either say like, well, I've been in therapy for so long, it didn't serve me anything. Or they're like, oh my God, I had such a great therapist. But then it's always, it's the person, you know, or I had such a great coach. Again, it's the person, you know, it's not really the method. Um, you know, my partner is a, a teacher or training to become a teacher. And he um, just had this uh, seminar on, I don't know what it was, body language or how to appear, appearance as a teacher or something. And he was like, I didn't know that so much of how much do the students learn is related to how my rapport with the students in the class. And I was like, yeah, that's a lot, you know? And yeah. Okay, anyway, I, I could chat about this for like a long time because I feel like such a rich um, topic. Is there anything that you remember 
from this session that um, I didn't ask about or that you feel like you wanted to um, share or explain? No, I think you covered the, the things that I hoped to explain. Honestly, it, it needs to be known that um, working with the, the, the mirror responses in our bodies is, is critical if we want to be able to consciously, purposely, and regularly go back to uh, the, the sort of connection that makes teaching therapy or coaching happen right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take that as the closing statement <laughs> well thank you so much um thank you for everyone who's watching this or will watch this uh will have watched this whatever we will be live again next week i guess yeah let's let's do this next week for the one that you helped me with yeah at the same time and then we will speak about um the session that i facilitated And I will do my homework and be a bit quicker with the posting. So you guys, if you're curious, can watch both of those sessions already online. Um, they're already on your channel, right? Um, I, I didn't put them on my channel. I'm, I'm still deciding whether, whether I want to post them there. But, uh, but that's a, I, I, th sometimes I'll just leave it on someone else's channel. I'll just be able okay. to have it on your channel. That's fine. All right. So they will be on YouTube on my Spiritual Underdog channel. And the link to the first one will be on my Instagram profile in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. <laughs> Bye.